Father's Day lock-in edition of Photos with Stories. Uh, they squeezed us in. They gave us an hour on this special Father's Day Photos with Stories. We're going to do the speed dating version because we got to go really fast because we only have one hour. we got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, real quick, shout out to all the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day, of course. Papa Father of Lockin and his children, Pete Shapiro. Happy Father's Day. And my dad, Bill Blakesburg. Uh, shout out to my family for getting me this groovy new bolo tie for Father's Day. Thanks, fam. We appreciate it. Love it. My favorite color, purple, as you can see. Um, we're all missing Lockin right now. We would all be on the farm right now. Uh, Grateful Gospel would have been just a few hours ago. Um, and again, happy birthday to Healy, who had uh, his birthday the other day. And thanks to all the staff at the Cap and Will and Harrison and Steph for making this happen. Um, Photos with Stories is an ongoing thing that I do every other Sunday, but because the schedule has been a little bit wacky, we're going to do a few in a row here. Next Sunday, June 28th at our normal time, which is 2 p.m. Eastern, we're going to talk about the photography of the late, great Jim Marshall. We're going to have Amelia Davis on. She owns the Jim Marshall uh, archive and estate, and we're going to hear some incredible stories. Jim's the guy who did the photograph of Johnny Cash flipping the bird and Bob Dylan rolling the tire. On July 12th, we're going to skip 4th of July weekend, July 12th, we are going to do photos and stories about Neil Casal. Um, go to kickstarter.com and do a search on Neil Casal, a late great guitar player. Neil was also a photographer, and we just finished a coffee table book of Neil's photographs that we are publishing uh, in the fall. It's going to come out, and it's done. It's going to the printer in about 10 days. I produced it. My daughter, uh, Ricky Blakesburg, was the photo editor. Uh, we had some people like Dave Schools wrote the forward for it, and Ryan Adams wrote a great essay. There's some other women that uh, photographers. Great moments in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. And we're going to talk to Jim Crowley on July 19th, Photos with Stories, 2 p.m. Eastern. All right, so today um, we've got Josh Timmermans and Dave Van. These guys are my team at Lockin. Uh, year one at Lockin, it was me and Taylor Crothers was the other photographer. And starting year two, it was me, Josh, and Dave. And it's been the three of us ever since. Um, we're going to each show you somewhere between 90 and 100 photos. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Over the last six years that the three of us, or seven years, including me, the first year, we have over 220,000 photos that we've taken at lock-in. And we're going to show you just under 300 of those photos. So um, we did our best to really do this. Um, uh, one of the things that um, Josh and Dave and I do is we split up and conquer and divide. Uh, we photograph every single artist that plays on a stage at lock-in, whether it's late night, early in the morning, uh, a band that won a contest for, you know, on the road to lock and whatever it might be, we photograph them and we, we schedule that stuff. Um, and then besides the late night stuff that I typically have Dave and Josh split up between them uh, because I stay in Charlottesville and I'm getting old and I go to bed earlier than they do and they stay on site in an RV. They typically shoot the late, late, late night stuff. And I'm usually gone by about one thirty in the morning, uh, heading off to uh, Sleepland in Charlottesville. Um, we cut, we cover everything. There's a lot of images. We shoot every artist. And so, um, uh, real quick, this first slide here, saveourstages.com. Please go and check that out. The relics marketplace. We do a book every two years from lock and we make a coffee table book. And this book is only available at the, for VIP or super VIP, uh, participants at lock in. But we've taken a few hundred of these books. We've made a few hundred extra copies and they are now for sale in the Relics Marketplace, which is the slide here you see, relicsmarketplace.com. There's only a few hundred of each of these that are for sale. Buy merch, support lock in support Relics. Um, every dollar helps in this time of Corona. These are incredible books. One of my favorite photos of my dear friend, Hannah. One of my favorite muses at lock in uh, And then, of course, we have the Neil Casal Music Foundation.org. And if you go to kickstarter.com and search Neil Casal, you will see the new Neil Casal Music Foundation.org that we just launched that. So here we go. I'm going to start my presentation uh, right now. And um, uh, my first slide is from Lock In Year One. 
And this is the love sign. And that's what Lachan is all about. I love the love sign. And it actually doesn't live in this particular location anymore. It's actually been moved twice. And this is where it lives now. And Lachan sign is one of my favorite things to go and get people to jump off of and stand on. Uh, these are some friends uh, of mine and of Lachan. And uh, this is Andy Frasco and the UN from last year, I believe it was, when they did not get to play because of the big weather storm that rolled in and prevented some bands from playing like Midnight North, unfortunately didn't get to play. Uh, and this is before the storm rolled in and I asked Andy and the band to come join me at the love sign. And we got this great shot and it's all I got of them from Lockin because they never played. Uh, of course, there's a rainbow at Lockin because Pete has that rainbow machine that he continues to rent every year since uh, Fare Thee Well. This is on Wednesday when everybody is rolling in before the festival. Uh, and I always like to shoot the fans. Actually, this is a great shot of my buddy um, uh, Figarelli, Mike Fig Figarelli. We call him Fig. I went to high school with this guy and uh, still a deadhead, still a music fan and uh, love to see him everywhere I go. Uh, there's Hannah from the back of the book that I just showed you, one of my favorite muses and people to photograph out Lockin. She's from Virginia. She goes every year, just love the beauty of this photograph and the light. And of course, my daughter, really my favorite muse to photograph at Lockin. I get both my kids come to Lockin most years, Sam and Ricky. And Ricky used to work as an intern for Sirius XM. And so she got to interview some people and that's uh, John Phillips who manages slightly stupid and foundations of funk and some other bands more rail riders i love photographing people um in the moment digging the music this is the lock and staff um actually i'm sorry these are all the photographers that are the the press photographers so there's me josh and dave in here as well as a bunch of great people milo the guy right down front in the middle he makes us these great shirts every year that say shooting so thanks milo for giving us those shirts we really really appreciate it i love my shooting shirts and i wear them all the time um this is Dan Berkowitz from CID, Pete Shapiro and Ben Baruch. Ben manages O'Teal and Twiddle and Pigeons and, and, and a lot of our favorite jam bands. And these guys work tirelessly to help make things like lock and happen. And of course, Ben is the guy responsible with um, Dave DeCiani, who also does Pigeons with, with Ben um, and uh, the live from out there streams that have been going on during Corona with Pigeons and all these guys. So the Grateful Dead obviously is a big, important part of lock in and Bob and Phil have really been anchors of this festival. I think it was last year that we were joking that Bob Weir was the MVP. He sat in with everybody. Uh, this is a Phil and Friends with Warren and Schofield and Medeski and Russo. Uh, Phil with a big grand smile. I mean, Phil is so happy at Lock and he really is. And you know what? All these artists are just always so friendly. Here's a great backstage shot of Phil and Derek and Susan, Chris Robinson and Mike Gordon. Everybody is so casual and just so relaxed and so just, you know, present. Everybody's checking out other people's sets because people play more than one night, right? Most festivals, you come in, you do your set, you're out the door on your tour bus. But at Lock-In, people are playing multiple nights, and so people are really checking out a lot of other music. Uh, Chris wrote the forward for the very first Lock-In book that we did, and we used this photo, on, I think, on his forward page. Uh, Chris and Bobby sitting in with Sadesky Trucks first year. Bobby sitting in with Edie Burkell. This is the first time Susan and Edie met with Bob standing by as part of the little trio. Of course, we got further with Trey. They played this earlier this weekend on the stream here. Uh, Susan Zizeski sitting in with further. Uh, uh, one of these great moments that only Headcount can put together. These guys were all around the Headcount table backstage signing a bunch of stuff that was going to help raise money for Headcount. Please register to vote. Your vote counts. This is very, very important in November. Okay, we are in a major crisis in our country. Please vote. Uh, so, you know, Derek, Susan, Trey, and Bobby, just incredible group of people hanging out backstage. Bobby's silhouette, Wolf Brothers from last year. And this was a super special moment at the end of the Wolf Brothers set when Susan sat in with Wolf Brothers and they went over and had this, you know, last minute mind meld at the end of that, that last song. Just a really magical moment there. Uh, this is the Lock and Step All-Stars. This was a late night uh, shot that I did right before they played in the VIP tent. At, uh, this is when the VIP uh, stuff happened at the end of the night instead of during the day. And I think they just came out and did a 30-minute Dark Star, and that's all they played um, for that VIP set, or a 40-minute Dark Star. Maybe they played one other song. Uh, this is the Lock and Step All-Stars rehearsing with Taj Mahal and Papa Molly. Uh, and then we get to Billy and the Kids, where Bob Weir and Mickey Hart sat in. They rolled Mickey in on that 
rolling um, uh, riser there as a kind of a surprise at the last minute. But uh, Billy and the Kids, what a great band with Reed and, and Tommy and, and Aaron, just really incredible. And again, this is the kind of stuff that happens only at Lockett, right? This is stuff that Pete Shapiro works really hard at trying to put this together. Uh, this is the Foundations of Funk with Zigaboo and George with Billy and Mickey, another great sit-in that also included Bobby and John Mayer. And of course, this is Dead & Co. when they played, and this is Air Mayer. Um, Full-on Pete Townsend air split. Love this shot. Actually, this shot appeared in Rolling Stone magazine right after Lockin. Uh, moving on to the Black Crows, Rich Robinson. Again, this is when the stage was in its first location. So the Lockin stage has been in three locations the first year. This is my favorite location because I really like the way the light hit the stage. Uh, this is, again, Sunset, uh, Black Crows. After the set, you know, Derek and Susan watching the Black Crows. Jackie was in the Black Crows. Uh, this is a Chris Robinson Brotherhood set. Uh, this is Grace Potter inside the tour bus with government mule and there's larry in the, uh, in the background um i mean ron sorry ron johnson um who's in warren haynes's band and this was them rehearsing southern man that they came out where grace did i think five songs with government mule that first year she was a special guest her band wasn't there i don't think the first year if i remember correctly she was just a guest i could be wrong on that uh, and here she is on stage singing southern man with government mule more warren with the megaphone a uh, beautiful sunset silhouette shot against Warren's Les Paul guitar. Uh, the Allman Brothers, Derek and Warren together. Um, uh, O'Teal back when he had hair. Um, and of course, the Allman Brothers with Greg and, and Derek and Warren. Not an easy shot to get, to get the three of them in a shot, just the way that they're all kind of spread out on stage. And of course, that was the year we lost uh, Farmer. Uh, Brian Farmer, who was the legendary guitar tech for, for Warren Haynes for many years and Johnny Cash before that. And so they all wore these Farmer tribute t-shirts on stage uh, that night. And we got this quick shot at the end of the night. Um, Robert Plant, the golden god of rock. You know, Robert doesn't let photographers really shoot him ever from the pit. Most photographers have to shoot him from the soundboard 100 feet back or 200 feet back. He doesn't like people shooting in the up direction. And uh, I was in touch with his publicist, who was also the publicist for uh, Lock and Festival, a guy named Ken Weinstein. Hey, Ken, if you're out there. And I was pleading with Ken to see if he can get Robert to give me permission to shoot more than three songs from In the Pit because I knew we were going to put Robert in the coffee table book for Lock -in. And so I was summoned backstage to go meet Robert, and Robert knew my work, had quoted specific photos from my website. This is Skin, the guitar player in Robert's band. And so he let me shoot him from on stage the whole set. And uh, after I shot the first show and got all these great shots, I was summoned into, into his dressing room, which is this shot here, where they were rehearsing, where Robert was really happy with what I shot night one. And then that was the Saturday night at sunset. And then Sunday night, uh, Robert came and closed out the festival um, that year, and I got to shoot Robert from on stage again. And there's some other great stories around Robert. If you ever find me in person, you can ask me, but they're a little bit too R and X rated for this family show that we have here. Um, this is String Cheese at Sunset, you know, another lock and staple. Um, uh, Billy Nershi and Kang, these guys are just obviously always incredible, bring the energy. They brought guests onto their sets, the Doobie Brothers and and uh, uh, um, uh, Cool and the Gang was a great year. Uh, this is Dave Schools again. Dave, like I said, he wrote the forward for that Neil Cassell book that's coming out. Go to the Kickstarter page and check that out. Uh, but Dave also wrote the forward for the very first lock and book that you do. And I have to send deep gratitude to Dave from me because he's just always so gracious with everything I asked him to do. He actually wrote the afterword for my Jerry Garcia book that came out last year. He wrote the lock and forward. He wrote the Neil Cassell forward. Dave is a very articulate writer. He's an incredible musician. He's a great person to hang out with and talk about life, love, music, rock and roll, sit-ins, the Grateful Dead, whatever it is. And he's sarcastic and funny as hell. So thanks Dave for being part of lock in and, and my world as well. Um, really cheers to you. Um, uh, Jimmy Herring, of course, from, uh, widespread Panic, the nicest man in show business. Uh, JB from Widespread. Margot Price whipping her hair, doing her best um, uh, Janis Joplin impersonation while on stage as another guest, special guest, sit-in, announced sit-in with uh, Widespread Panic at, 
at lock-in, just incredible. And this was one of my favorites, John Fogarty doing a full, you know, a bunch of Creedence songs, you know, I mean, who didn't grow up listening to Creedence on the radio? Um, just incredible stuff. And then of course, Derek truck sitting in, but you know, Josh is going to show a lot more lock and photos. Josh Timmermans, who's coming up after me, he is widespread panics photographer and, you know, tough act to follow. So I'm just giving you a few highlights and want to give a shout out because widespread has been so instrumental every year for me at lock in and Josh will show you more great shots of those guys. Uh, Jeff Tweedy and, and uh, Wilco, um, at lock in was great. And of course, this is a uh, Pete with a double rainbow. He brought in the rain to the double rainbow machine that year when Wilco played. And I think Will, uh, Tweedy got up there and said something like, uh, um, I fucking hate rainbows. And uh, it was kind of a funny thing. So um, uh, Willie Nelson's trigger guitar, Willie Nelson, just such a great person to photograph. Here's the Doobie brothers with string cheese. And the Doobie Brothers were my very first concert in 1975. I have a soft spot for the Doobie Brothers. And that show almost didn't happen because of the big weather storm. My Morning Jacket, just incredible band to photograph. Always, these guys just bring it. Um, here's a bunch of single photos. We got Marcus King. We got Ween with the big sunset uh, happening from on stage. Prez Hall with Ben Jaffe. Uh, Luther Dickinson and Stanton Moore, just, you know, salt of the earth jam band people that we love keller williams you know grateful gospel yorma doing the 50th anniversary of the jefferson airplane moon alice with the t sisters and lester chambers grace potter just rocking it rocking it i mean we could literally do an entire program of just incredibly sexy killer rock and roll photos of grace potter one of my favorite people to photograph Grace wrote the afterword for my hippie chick book. Grace Slick wrote the forward for that book. I love Grace. I love photographing her dear friend. The Avid brothers, uh, Umphreys McGee, they're, you know, just again, just stalwarts of our jam band community. Uh, Jimmy Cliff, the first year on stage. Uh, David Shaw from The Revivalists. You always got to show Jesus Christ Superstar from Lettuce because he is the man. Um, again, Mo, just old friends of mine. I love photographing these guys. There's Al with the double neck on stage. I love this shot here of the three of them. If you look at this picture, Al is rocking it. Rob is rocking it. Chuck is at the other side of the stage, rubbing his guitar strings against his microphone stand. I mean, just one of those moments. And who doesn't love a smiling picture of Derek Trucks? Susan smiling, Derek and Susan. Here's the legendary sunset photo that I did that's also included in their most recent record that they put out. This is the inside gatefold photo on the vinyl. And um, uh, here's Trey sitting in with Derek and Susan last year. And then, of course, Trey and the Trey band with Derek sitting in. And, and all of a sudden they come on stage and they play that song from, from Derek and the Dominoes and Jesse Louder. For those of you who know him, says to me, he goes, you know what they're doing, right? I go, covering a bunch of Derek and the Dominoes. He goes, no, they're going to play all of Layla. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And... Uh, you know, Layla just, it, it truly was the most epic thing I've seen in a really long time. I mean, Levon Helm's 70th birthday show at Mountain Jam was one of them. But these guys doing Layla was truly, truly an epic, epic moment. You know, we've been listening to that song, Layla, for 40 years. We've heard it so many times that sometimes we might hear it come on the radio and actually turn it off because we've heard it so many times. And when they started playing Layla and Derek started doing the slide part, you know, the Dwayne Allman slide part in Layla from the record. I was in tears in the pit watching this. It was the most legendary epic thing that I've seen in rock and roll. It truly was incredible. And this kind of stuff only happens at Lockin. And again, here we have Trey and we have Fish. The Fish Boys came and brought it. Um, Gary Clark Jr., a couple of shots of Gary. Um, Jason Isbell at Sunset last year. And then, of course, this is the Les Paul guitar that I believe he owns. That was what they recorded Sweet Home Alabama on. Twiddle, uh, John Popper silhouette, J-Rad, J-Rad. Uh, again, more legendary moments with Leon Russell and Derek Trucks. Uh, just, again, one of those legendary things. Tw uh, uh, Pigeons playing ping pong. This is where I met them. I asked them to do this bow shot. I didn't even know these guys. And I directed a video for their song King Kong last year. We've become good friends. We've done numerous photo shoots. O'Teal, Karung Bennett at, at Sunset, uh, Circles Around the Sun. I had a choice, either Circles Around the Sun or J-Rad. Before I left to go back to Charlottesville, I chose Circles. And even though I missed the Bob Weir couch tour shot, which I think Josh and Dave both shot, I got to see my last Circles Around the Sun show with Neil 
Again, this is the sunset silhouette shot of Neil. Um, I had dinner with Neil right after this set. We were the only two guys in catering. Catering was closed. It was 830. And uh, this was the last conversation that I had with Neil. And that was uh, Saturday night lock in this photo of Neil smiling. We talked about this. I actually emailed him and showed him that sunset photo. I had it on my phone already because I wanted to send it to him. And then I sat down and had dinner with him for 20 minutes. And that was the last time that I saw Neil. Uh, Tom Petty from Lock In, which of course ended up as the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And that is my presentation. Josh Timmermans, I'm sh shooting it over to you. Um, thanks, everybody. We'll talk and take questions at the end. Go, Josh. You're on. Hey, guys. Thanks for being here. Once again, thanks to the entire Lock In team for putting this together. Thanks, Jay, for the introduction. Um, it's great to see my good friends that I do a lot of work with here at Lock In. Um, and I'll just get right into it here. Um, you know, this first slide here is the first year lock-in that I was there. I was on assignment, wasn't necessarily with the team yet until the second year. But, you know, this is Chris uh, Chris Robinson with the Black Crows in the moment, in the element. Um, you know, there's a lot of special moments that first year, but you can see with Chris, you know, caught him spinning his hair right here. And uh, there was a lot of that new energy of a festival. At, at every first festival you go to, you get this special energy at the first start. And uh, it was palatable. And you can see it in a lot of these images. Um, this next image here got a good close up of uh, Bob Weir and and, uh, and Chris Robinson um, sharing a moment together up at the mic. Um, this next image of Colonel Bruce, um, Colonel Bruce and friends, was that the first one? Uh, this specific image would end up being on the back of um, the playbill for Hampton uh, 70, where we celebrated Colonel Bruce's birthday in Atlanta. Um, really special moment, special photo for me. Uh, this next one is the first year um, Jimmy Cliff playing, um, you know, his bongo up close, really special moment that first year with, with Jimmy Cliff as well. Um, this next one is the young revivalist. I think this is the second lock-in, um, you know, specifically like Ed Wayne's political party shirt there. It's kind of fitting right now, uh, but you can see the youngest in these guys. And these guys have gone on to great things, uh, really good friends. Um, this next image is drummers of lock-in here. Here we see Adam Deitch and Chris Myers of Humphrey McGee. This is right before the lettuce set. Um, and you'll see this next image of uh, lettuce is, is right when the clouds were starting to kind of blow up um, on the farm there and uh, caught Adam raising his uh, drumstick to the sky. Pretty special moment. Uh, this next image is Benny Bloom uh, directing uh, the horn section over here. Uh, I believe it was a no BS brass band. Um, and if you know Eric Benny, Benny Bloom, he's, uh, he's quite a character. And you can see that here directing his horns. Uh, this next image is of uh, the Del McCurry band. This was the uh, second year of lock-in, and this is when uh, we didn't have a backdrop. Um, great lighting, great clouds. Uh, it was tough to get this image. You had to climb up a little bit, but um, it turned out well. I, I like this clean image of, uh, of Del and his family. Uh, this next image is uh, Steve Winwood out of the carriage house doing a little bit of rehearsal with Widespread Panic. Uh, they did a little, about two hours of rehearsing out there before they performed the next night. Um, and you'll see this next image. Um, I believe this was during Low Spark. Um, Steve image, uh, Steve Winwood and JB completely caught up in the moment, enjoying uh, enjoying what he's hearing out of Steve. Um, and this next image is one of my favorite images of JB. This is this is pure JB in the moment. Um, like like Jay, uh, Jay said earlier, I do a lot of photographing for Widespread Panic, and this image out of all the lock-ins that I've shot speaks to me a lot about JB. I shared this recently on social, but it's a special image of JB for me. Um, this next image is a rare moment where you get one of the artists to look over and kind of give the camera a look and an eye. Uh, that was Tom. Got a smile from him as well. Uh, this next image is the first um, light image that I really captured that stuck out to me. Out, I believe it was called the Triangle Stage at that point. This is Acoustic Hot Tuna. Um, and that stage, uh, you know, that area would later, you know, become Jerry's, uh, Jerry's Forest. But this was the early stages of uh, the development of that area. This next image is of Grace Potter. Why this sticks out to me is it was really hot that day. And from Greg's or uh, Grace's legs, you can see that the music was speaking to her. She's goosebumps all over her body. And that's what happens when good music hits. It, uh, it makes you feel that way. Next image is of the legend, uh, Willie Nelson. It's a classic pose. You can almost see him getting ready to go down on the trigger. And, uh, you know, it's that, that guitar is seen a lot. And um, he, when his arm is raised like that, you can see both his arm and that guitar has gone through quite a bit. Um, and, and Willie's, a, you know, he's a legend. This next image here is 
when Susan came out to play with widespread, uh, JB told a joke, and you could see uh, the laughter in Susan's face. It was palatable. Good captured moment there. This is another moment when uh, some of the Tedeschi Trucks band members came out. That's uh, the late Kofi Burbage demanding the stage. All members uh, on stage looking over. This is a uh, uh, Almond Brothers image here, uh, and you can see my uh, my coworkers. You can see Jay in the bottom there, and, and Dave working as well. And I think we needed a wide angle, and that's back when we could actually get out to the soundboard. So us photographers have a tough time getting out there sometimes, but I was able to get out and get a good wide angle of Almond Brothers band. And, and as Jay showed earlier, the, the farmer shirts caught Warren in a moment, um, expressing himself in multiple ways. And in a rare moment, this is Greg, um, who very rarely looked to his right. Um, here is a moment where I caught Greg looking to the right, looking out to the crowd. Um, enjoy that. And this next image, Almond Brothers as well, had to convince many people that this is not the actual sunset that happened. This was actually the video wall that was behind, but uh, a great moment nonetheless. This is from the recent year, 2019, when Trey sat in, or I mean, sorry, when Derek sat in with Trey uh, Anastasia band and uh, for the look on Trey's face. Uh, anytime Derek sits in, that's uh, many people's face in the crowd. It's another moment. This is when the rain started to fall and uh, caught the light in a perfect time. Um, got Trey uh, eyes looking directly at the camera. It was a special moment. He knew it was a special moment. I did as well. Um, and so did Susan, who was standing to Trey's right, my left. Um, she's to this next, uh, you know, seeing her and her smile in that moment. Um, shortly thereafter, the way that Trey and Susan are embracing one another, you, you could tell that everybody had witnessed a special moment and they experienced it themselves. This very next image is Peter Shapiro um, before the stage turned and Preservation Hall Jazz Band. And he got the guys together in a circle and it was kind of a rally and wish them all a great show. And uh, it was a special moment that I was able to catch and share with the guys, uh, special for me. And it works really well in black and white for me. This next image is a classic, uh, you know, Bob Weir sit in. Bob Weir sitting in with Twiddle. I believe uh, John Popper's up on stage, Eric Krasno. Um, classic moments that only happen at Lock and Festival. Caught the sun at the perfect moment there, reach across the stage. Uh, next image is Wolfpack. And this is an entertaining act. If you've ever seen them, they put on quite a show. I was lucky enough to catch this right when I went side stage. The guy's uh, in the moment completely. Same with this next image. This is Trey when he was sitting in with Tedeschi Trucks Band. And uh, you can see that these two uh, guitars had a wonderful time together this, this past year. Another moment that's really special for me, this is Steel Pulse, David Hines of Steel Pulse and, and Bob Weir. Um, these two guys were setting up backstage. The reason this is special to me is these guys were setting up their equipment tuning, plugging in, and it wasn't until right as the stage was turning that I was able to catch this moment of these guys giving each other a hello. Um, uh, I, sometimes these moments take patience and you have to wait and wait and wait. And this is one of the moments where it pays off. A uh, great moment between the two. Another moment where you have to be patient, Karungbin. Um, they had been using these drumsticks to play on, I believe, wine bottles. And this was just a small moment where uh, I was lucky enough to catch. Um, and speaking of Krungman, this is when Trey sat in. All, both of these bands, uh, the musicians are from Texas, so they were sharing a moment here. Um, and the look on Trey's face, uh, in order to capture a moment like that, it, it takes extreme patience. Um, specifically, this, the height of the stage this year for this image. Um, I had to climb up pretty high to get this and be patient and wait for a moment of emotion. And that's, uh, that's what happened here, if you can see. Uh, this next image is... Jay Rabb is playing on the main stage, and Peter Shapiro thought it would be a great idea to put Bob Weir on a couch and spin the stage around and surprise the crowd. So I was lucky enough to be backstage when Bob sat down, captured this image before the stage rotated. And then this next image is when the stage is rotating. And as you can see, the, the crowd is quite surprised, caught me by surprise, um, a very rare moment funny moment. I'm glad Pete set that up. It was classic. Um, and speaking of the stage rotating, this is Green Sky Bluegrass facing the opposite way of the stage that rotates. This is what's going on behind the stage. And as you see from the next image with Keller, this is what's being performed on the other side. So I take the picture of Green Sky, run around, and then had to cut across the stage to capture this moment with Keller um, in a classic Keller pose. 
uh, love the same image, love color, and encapsulates uh, him and uh, his performances. This next image, I went back over to the other side of the stage, and this was uh, Michael Bont, the, the banjo player. Um, and the heart on the end, you know, the, heart, the love theme kind of plays throughout Lockin. Uh, but this specific image, um, you know, it was, it's in honor of their friend, Lovey, uh, who they lost earlier in that year. Um, a special moment, uh, special moment, for, I know, for, the, for Michael as well. Uh, that love image, uh, love theme kind of plays through in this next image. It's JV with a little bit of love on the background, a little heart. Um, and then my very good friend, Dwayne, with a nice little smirk. Uh, Dwayne's a great friend. Um, and, and anytime I'm back there, Dwayne sees me. He loves to give a nice little smirk. So, miss you, Dwayne. Hope you're doing well. This is another moment where I believe uh, Widespread had just finished playing, and Jay Rowder was getting ready to come on, and Jim James was going to be sitting in. This is Eric Krasno, uh, Marcus King, and Haley, and let's see, Dwayne and Peter Shapiro sitting on the rail enjoying the moment. This is Jim James sitting in with J-Rad. Let's go through some images here. This is a split black and white, Keller Williams and green sky bluegrass. Here's a rehearsal with Mario Price and widespread panic. Keller Williams with Keller and the Keels. Another moment of uh, John Mayer sitting in with Lettuce for the J-Rads or the Jerry Garcia band set that Lettuce did. Benny Bloom sitting Tangled Up in Blue with Bob Weir, checking out who is singing Tangled Up in Blue. It's Benny Bloom. Uh, this is from the second locking. That's my buddy John Ficklin with the shooting of the cannon. He created this cannon and uh, fired that off, I believe, the second one with John Popper getting ready to sing the national anthem. This is from the second. This is uh, the Doobie Brothers, the String Cheese Incident. Sunset from that same stage. This is my, one of my favorite setups with being able to see the sunset. Another moment, Ryan Stasek. Uh, caught in the moment. Humphreys oh, McGee. This is Hot Tuna, which I believe we were going to be. See, you guys are going to be seeing later today. Caught them from behind. Black and white. I think that works there. Um, sunset from the stage with widespread panic. Um, a classic image there. Um, the sky lit up that night. Um, this is one of my favorite sunset images that I've captured on the on the farm. Jimmy Cliff sitting in with widespread panic. Another special moment. Jimmy Cliff, Billy Kreutzman with Billy and the Kids. It's rare that you get a musician to look you in the eye. Um, I've caught this moment with Billy and the Kids. Love this image of Billy. This next image is Carlos Santana, when Carlos played. Uh, this image would later go on to be on uh, his line of headphones. You can see this image is uh, on the packaging for uh, Carlos's headphone line. This image of Fishbone, Angelo Moore. I don't know how the man gets his leg up like that, but he did. Um, I was lucky enough to capture it at peak moment. Dave Schools in the element. Obviously, Dave is a character. He, uh, he takes on many personalities and personas on stage, and it's always great to capture Dave in those different elements. Love you, Dave. Miss you. Hope you're well. Charles, the late Charles Bradley with the symbol of love. Fish. Um, when you do this acapella shot, it's tough. You have to watch the mic stands. And I think this black and white image works really well. Another black and white image from behind. This is uh, Keller Williams, I believe, doing the Grateful Grass. Um, I like doing these elevated shots from behind. It really encapsulates uh, the, the crowd, the size, exactly what's going on in the field. And this is another one. This image is of the hardworking Americans. Uh, this image would later go on to be on the inside of their album. We're all in this together. Check that out. Hardworking Americans, great band, Dave Schools, uh, Dwayne Trucks. And uh, this is another silhouette image of Derek and Susan. I like to try and use backlighting at times to capture the musicians and let the light speak for itself. This is one where I think that works. This is one where the light from behind in color works with Jim James, My Morning Jacket. Another one where light is playing a big, big role the year that they brought the disco ball. This is a moment when uh, Mahali uh, from Twiddle was standing side stage and saw Trey and Fishman enjoying the Whaler set and actually asked me if, if there any way that we could get a photo with Trey and Fish because Fish is one of his influences. So I took it underneath my wing and approached Trey and Fishman and said, hey guys, let's get a photo of you guys together. And this moment happened, a moment I'll never forget. And uh, the guys really enjoyed watching the rest of the Whaler set. Moment here is uh, Phil looking over to Gary Clark Jr., big smiles. 
This is uh, this next image is Mike Smith, our two remain our road manager, production manager. I'm sorry for widespread. Um, Shapiro, John Dindis. And, you know, this sunset image is one that I'll never forget. I caught the guys back there. Um, my buddy, uh, my buddy, Jeffrey. Um, this next image is Phil and Susan backstage um, right after they met Edie. Caught them in a good moment. And you got to be in the right place at the right time. And this is another, this last image here is where I caught David on the edge of the stage from the Revivalists, reaching out to the crowd. Um, classic moments. I really appreciate all your guys' time. I'm going to send it over to Mike and Padre, Dave Van. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see y'all soon. Dave, over to you. Hey, everyone. Um, psyched to be part of the Lock and Photo team and um, work with Jay and Josh. We've known them both for a long time. Um, we all sort of try to make sure that all the, all the bases are covered at Lock In and work the different angles and make sure that all the different perspectives are covered. Um, I'm going to start out with some images that sort of cover the big picture. Um, this first image here is of Umphreys McGee from Lock In 2014. Wide shot really captures the lights that Jefferson Waffle, uh, the lighting designer, was doing at the time. Um, this next photo is of Widespread Panic from Lock In 2014 as well, when Randall Bramlett was sitting in on stage. Uh, next up, this was one of the early appearances from J Rad from 2016 at the Relic stage. Uh, like the way the lights looked in the background. This actually went in the coffee table book that Jay put together. Um, next up is uh, the disco ball shot um, from My Morning Jacket when they headlined in 2016. Uh, Mark Janowitz, their lighting designer, always does a uh, great job with the disco ball, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, next up is a wide shot from 2016 when Fish was uh, headlining the festival. Um, after that, this is a wide shot taken back from the soundboard of uh, String Cheese Incident from 2017. Um, this next shot is a widespread panic from 2017 back from the soundboard. Josh had gotten the set list and sent that to us. So we knew that uh, the chilly water was coming up and it always makes for a great photo, especially when you get it from further back and you get the water in the air when the fans throw their water bottles up and hopefully don't hit you in the head. Uh, next up, this was a photo I took on a monopod um, up in the air, elevated during Dead & Co's headlining set from 2018. Uh, the full moon was rising in the background and just looked really cool. And I always like this one. Uh, next up, uh, Jay and Josh, I think, showed their photos from closer to the stage. This is, this is from 2019 from Trey Anastasio's uh, set when Derek, Derek Truck sat in. I was back at the soundboard standing next to Mark Janowitz, who also does lights for Trey. Um, uh, he really lit up the rain. It rained for, for that whole second set, just like a light mist, which made for some really nice photos. Uh, next up, I'm moving on to big picture shots, but more of a wide angle sunset shot. This was from 2014. And I remember uh, it being one of, one of the first really cool sunsets that I saw at Lock and uh, Bill Kreutzman to Lock and Step All Stars were on the right, and the String Cheese drummers came out and they sort of jammed together before moving into the String Cheese set. Um, next up, uh, one of my favorite sunsets from Lock and from 2015. It was sort of a cotton candy pink sky from Whiteford Panic set in 2015. Uh, next one here is a little girl with the sun setting up, uh, twirling her ribbon there. Um, the next two are similar angles. This one is from Phil and the Terrapin Family Van from 2017. And then the next shot is from the Wolfpack set that Josh was just talking about a minute ago. Great sunset that night. Um, next, I'm gonna kind of move into collaborations. Uh, it's hard to narrow down uh, favorite moments from Lock-In, so there's so many great collaborations. This is from Lettuce's set from 2014, when the No BS Brass Band sat in. You've got Press, who was playing with the band at the time. Next up is from the String Cheese Incident, uh, Cool in the Gang set from 2014. Um, after that, uh, this one is uh, Phil, Phil and Friends, when Chris Robinson sat in from 2015. Press was there, obviously, Neil Casal as well. Um, this next one is from Jefferson, the Jefferson Airplane 50 um, show, tribute show, which was a great night. Uh, ob obviously, it was your, your man Jack, as well as um, Larry Campbell and his wife uh, was singing lead vocals that night. Um, next up is from 2015 from the Mad Dogs and Englishmen set, which was really a, one, of, one of the best collaborations. Um, I really enjoyed the, that night in this photo. Um, next up, this is Jimmy Cliff sitting in with Whitesford Panic, and then Larry Campbell's in the background on this one, too, from the Rolling Stones. That was, that was very cool. Um, 
Next up, Phil and Carlos Santana playing together. Uh, really special night at Lock In. And then uh, we're moving on to 2015 from the afternoon set with the Tedeschi Trucks Band with Bobby sitting in. Bobby was MVP this year, as he is many years at Lock In. Um, this is all, this next photo is also from Lock In from when, when Bobby was the surprise guest along with Mickey for the building the kids set. Josh, or Jay was talking about this earlier, but I really love this night and Mickey coming in at the end and Bobby was a nice surprise for everybody. Uh, next up is from 2016, Humphreys McGee with Dean Ween sitting in. Very cool moment. Um, uh, next shot is Lock and Favorites J Rad. This one's from 2016, with Nicole Atkins playing the Donna part. Really enjoyed this night and her, her sit in. Um, next up, this was from Jim James's afternoon set at Lock in in 2017 when Brandy Carlisle came out and played. Uh, Brandy had her own set later, later that afternoon and uh, it was a great set as well. Um, next up, 2017 J Rad. Um, Bobby came out again. We, we had word that he was going to be coming out at some point in the night. And I like this one. This was taken slightly elevated with the monopod and kind of caught Bobby hand, hand up in the air. Uh, this next one is with Bobby and Phil. Um, this was one of the first times I think, I think this was the first time that they played together again after the Fair Lee Well shows. This was actually during Moe's set from 2017. Um, that same year, the Abbott brothers closed out um, the Sunday night and their second set, Bob Weir sat in for most of the set. Bobby's right there. This is also slightly elevated on a monopod, kind of captured the big, big picture and get everybody in the band, which is sometimes a challenge. Uh, this next one uh, is from Lock in 2018. My favorite, favorite, uh, light moments. Um, I had gotten the heads up from my buddy Jefferson Waffle that um, that he was that on the transition in between Humphreys and Lettuce, they were going to stopped the stage and the bands were going to jam together and and waffle had set up some light, lighting cues that were really cool and unique to kind of accentuate while the band played together for probably about 10 minutes before going into lettuce's set um jay had mentioned this earlier the foundations of funk set was really uh, a great moment at lock and john mayer here george porter jr ian neville bobby and cyril neville um uh this next one here is from the lettuce and friends jerry garcia band tribute uh, which was from Lock in 2018. You've got Bobby in the middle. John Mayer came out for, for this set, and he originally was only supposed to play a couple songs, but he ended up sitting in for the whole night. Uh, he was having so much fun. Um, Oteil also played earlier in that set. Uh, next up is from when Dead & Co. Uh, headlined in 2018. Uh, Branford Marsalis was on stage. Uh, was really loved this night and was happy to see Branford there. I actually saw Branford play with the dead back in the nineties. So that was pretty cool to see him out there again. Um, next up, Josh mentioned earlier, Trey with Krungbin, great night at Lockin. really enjoyed this. The lighting was great. And this was the first real kickoff to Lockin that year because there were some weather delays earlier in the day. Uh, again, the Bobby sit in, we, we had heard the Bobby was going to sit in. We didn't know it was literally going to be on a couch spinning around while the band kept going on the other side. Uh, great, great lock in moment. Um, next up, I think Jay mentioned this one earlier. This is from the Moon Alice set in 2019 with Lester Chambers and the Tia Sisters. Um, next up, this is Edie Brickell and um, from Edie Brickell's set when Bobby came out and played, he was all over the place again that year. Um, next up, the Revivalist set, lock in favorites with Jen, Jen Hartswick, who always does an amazing job with a, a nice beaming smile on her face. And then uh, this next one here from 2019 from the Tedeschi Trucks band when Trey Anastasia sat in all night for the Layla set. You know, Jay talked about it. This is one of my favorite nights at Lock-In ever. Uh, this next photo is from the Soul Live Late Night set um, at the Forest um, in 2019. Um, it was great. Crowds were sitting in for this whole set. And Dwayne Betts came out and channeled his father doing a uh, wicked cover of uh, In Memory of Elizabeth Reed. Allman Brothers classic. Uh, this next photo is Mo with Marcus King sitting in. Um, and this last one here is, this is Bob Weir and Wolf Rose with Susan Tedeschi sitting in from 2019. Uh, that's the last of my collaboration images, I think. Moving on to some iconic moments and artists from, uh, from Lock-In that I really like. This is um, Jeff Tweedy and Wilco. Uh, one of my favorite photos of Tom Petty from 2014 Lock-In. 
Tom had a beaming smile on his face, and this was one of the last times I got to photograph him live. Uh, it was a great night and great set. Next up, uh, Willie with Trigger again here. Uh, that was from 2014. Uh, this next one is Grace Potter from 2014. Uh, obviously, Ham ended up having a really good time that day. Um, this next photo is of Greg Allman and the Allman Brothers from 2014. This was the last time that I got to photograph the Allman Brothers. I had photographed them in the 90s and early 2000s, but it was a special night at Lockin. Um, this next one is from 2015 from the Robert Plant set. This, like I said, like Jay said earlier, this one was taken from a little bit further back from the soundboard. Uh, again, the Charles Bradley set uh, from Lockin 2016. You can see the soul and emotion on his face. Uh, always powerful to uh, see this guy play, and that, that set was one of my, one of my favorites. Uh, next one is Lockin 2016, Ween here uh, from their afternoon set. And this is one of my favorites from Fish's set from 2016, Trey Anastasio with Chris Perota's lights working their magic with the light kind of beaming up from behind with some, with some highlighting the dust and the particles. I always like the shot. Uh, next photo is from 2017, Umphreys McGee playing. Uh, Jake was down front, Stasek in the background, and Waffle doing a great job with the lights. I think the band retweeted this photo that night. Uh, this next one is from 2017. My friends Green Sky Bluegrass and Anders, Anders Beck and Paul Hoffman came down front to ham it up. Uh, I actually saw Jay, Jay's ladder. You can actually see Jay up on the right here. Um, up front, the stage was high that year, so I had gotten up on the ladder. Those two guys saw that I was there, and they came down front to ham it up for me and got some great photos from that moment. Um, John Fogarty from 2017, Epic Night. Cheryl Crow's afternoon set. I hadn't seen Cheryl in a long time, and I was really impressed with her afternoon set at Lock in 2018. Sort of moving on to the um, uh, late nights of the forest. This is Taj Mahal from uh, 2014. Next up, wide angle shot from the Relic Stage 2014, dumpster to funk with the trees lit up in the background. Uh, wide angle shot from uh, the Triangle Stage from 2014. This is Hot Tuna. Um, great shot from the forest is Mickey Hart with Steve Kimlock and Android Jones sitting in on the forest stage. That was from 2015. And uh, Government Mule's late night set at the Relic Stage from 2015. Great moment. Um, I, I, I often photograph a lot of the late night stuff, as Jay had mentioned earlier, and this is one of, one of my favorites from an early year of the forest with the Dancing Bear. Um, Hammond up for me. That was from 2016. Um, and next up is my friends with Disco Biscuits. I, I like the shot. This was taken back from the soundboards, really captured the lights and the lasers. Um, really enjoyed when the band played that year. Uh, this next one was the first year that they had done this, the Terrapin Station cutout from, to, to kind of emulate the album cover, which they did a great job. This is from the Midnight North set from 2017. You can see Graham's father, Phil Left, sitting off on the left, admiring his son. All night, thought that Phil might come out on stage, but he never actually did come out that night. Um, next up is from Garcia's Forest in 2018, sort of a wide angle shot. Um, this next one is one of my favorites from uh, Lock in the Forest in 2018. This is Jay, um, Jay Starling's Garcia's Grass late night set, but it really captured the lighting with Ben Jamin's tapestry and sort of the whole forest and the fans. Uh, this, is, this next one is from 2018 from Garcia's Forest. From the uh, Jerry Dance Party, you've got DJ Jerry Brother, aka Brett Fair Brother, um, down there. And really captures the light. This is actually my background images and one of my favorite photos from Lockin. Um, again, this, this next one here is from the Circles, circles Around the Sunset. Um, I went over there straight after J-Rad finished on the main stage and really enjoyed that set. Didn't know that this was gonna be Neil Casal's last set. So it was a pretty powerful uh, performance and just having him at Lockin that year meant a lot to a lot of people. This next one is from Garcia's Forest, Galactic. This one was taken from a monopod back back at the soundboard with the fisheye lens to sort of get a, get the forest, get the trees, fans, and the band. Uh, moving on to photos of Headcount Participation Row. Um, Andy Bernstein is an old friend of mine, and I have worked with those guys for a long time and try to get photos of what they're doing because they, they've got so many good causes they support. Uh, this is an installation piece that they did where they had people write some of their favorite causes on there. I think that one was from 2015. Mr. Peter Shapiro with the signed guitar that I think Bobby played with earlier that year. That was auctioned off for a lot of money, which went towards headcount and good cause. This next one is a My Morning Jacket with the Get Out the Boat signs. 
and also Phil with the Get Out the Vote sign. This one got a lot of play in social media. Uh, next up here is a wide angle fisheye shot from the um, Garcia's Forest during the daytime. They do yoga out there every morning. I try to get by there a couple times every year to kind of capture, uh, capture everything that's going on. This sort of gets the trees, the people, the fans. Uh, next up, this one, this one is a funny moment. Uh, Lock and Gary is always down front. And for many years, Gary's birthday fell um, on Lock and, and he's a big Tedeschi Trucks fan. Susan gave him a shout out this year and I think the next year as well. This next one is from J Red set in Lock in 2018 with uh, girls rocking out down front. Uh, this next one, you never know what you're going to see at the love sign. I happened to catch these two <clears throat> actually getting married by friends of theirs and did got photos of them as well as them and their friends afterwards. Uh, happened to catch Peter Shapiro up here. This was from a different year. This was from last year in 2019. Uh, this next one is the Hamageddon crew and all the people that made everything happen over there with that giant mon monstrosity uh, that, where they cook up the pigs and, and have the great barbecue. But I always like that shot. Captures the flames in the background. And this is my last photo here of the wheelhouse. Uh, Lockin encourages fans to bring their bikes and sort of ride around between stages. They also have a place where you can rent bikes, ride trails, and ride from show to show. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, All right. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. So we just have a few more minutes left before we get back to rock and roll. Um, I know we I forgot to ask earlier if anybody has any questions to put them in the comment section of any of the social media we've got. Harrison from uh, relics.com queuing anything. Uh, Harrison, are there any questions? Or um, did I blow it by not asking? In the meantime, I'm going to remind everybody about the Lock and Coffee Table book, uh, which you can find at the relicsmarketplace.com website. There really are only a few hundred of these books from each year, probably less than 200. So if you've wanted one of these Lock and Coffee Table books, volume one, two, and three, with volume four coming out after the next Lock and whenever that might be, could be in the fall, could be next year, um, you know, go to Relics Marketplace to check these out. Uh, Harrison, any questions for anybody? Yeah, uh, we have a few questions. The first okay. one is from Jake G, and he is curious, this is a general question, how does the rotating stage influence how you shoot, and has that resulted in any particularly cool shots? I'll start that, and maybe Josh will finish it. So, first of all, I feel like Josh is the master of getting that shot, looking down the wall where you're seeing what's in front and what's in back. I've tried to get it. I can't even get it. Josh is like the master of that shot, right? So as far as the, the circular stage, my biggest problem with it is that, that we have that half black wall as the backdrop for everything. And visually, it's not that great, but it is what it is. And the other thing that I don't love about it and this is probably just me being selfish, is that it gives us no time for a break because it's music into music into music. And, and from the fan standpoint, that might be great, but also it means you've got to make some choices and say, okay, I'm going to miss this next set because I have to go to the bathroom or I have to eat dinner. Or in our case, as photographers, we have to download photos. Josh, you want to add on to that at all? Josh, you're muted. Josh, you're muted. Yeah, you know, the thing about it is it, this, the stage, you know, the rotating stage is, is great for the production people. But from our perspective, like Jay said, it's, it's, it can be difficult. Um, capturing the environment, the essence of it, it, it's, it, it can be fun. Like Jay said, it's, it's, it, it can be cumbersome for us photographers to produce a quality image because we want it to be nice and beautiful behind it. And we have the wall. So, you know, that's, that's us photographers being picky. But for the most part, it's, you know, it, it's cumbersome for us to work around, but we make it work. You know, there's, we work with a lot of quality people that let us do what we do. And that stage is, is, you know, it's, we all work together together to make it really happen and make it work. Harrison, you got a question? Yeah. Um, let's do one more and then we can wrap this up. Yeah. I think we, well, we got about five minutes. So I think we're good for maybe two more. Great. So, how many photos per day do you take on average during each day at lock and, and how do you pick out the best moments after the festival? And that question is from Don. Well, we were all talk we talked about this earlier. So uh, on day one, Wednesday, we maybe take about a thousand photos. Uh, Thursday, day two, maybe 2000 to 2500. And then uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I think we all each average somewhere around 3500 photos per day. 
So when we get home from lock-in, we have 12, 13, 14, 15,000 photos to look through. And I'm pretty sure that every one of us looks at every single photo we take. And uh, we use software programs like Lightroom and it lets you rate your photos, one star, two star, three star. And so I start out by rating a million things, one star, then I cut it down to two star, then I cut it down to three star. And so I get a reasonable number of photos that I actually deliver to uh, a lock in festival, which maybe is a total of 2000 to 3000 photos for the whole weekend or something like that. Um, next question. Process for sure. Next question is, how do you decide when to shoot color and when to shoot in black and white? Dave, why don't you answer that one? I mean, I, I think the answer is the same for all of us, at least for me. I mean, we, sh we shoot in color um, all, most of the time, and then we'll just, I mean, you can actually set it in camera to shoot in black and white, but as far as I go, I shoot in color all the time, and then the black and white, I do a, I do a sepia tone a lot of times, and that's done in post-production. And I think Josh is the same way and Jay's the same way. Yeah, it's basically vibe, you know, like Josh on his silhouette shot of uh, Tedeschi trucks. It just has that vibe in black and white. And I shot when I was a film shooter, uh, I shot a lot of black and white films. So I just have a natural uh, liking to that vibe. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jay. I think a lot of times black and white, it, you want the emotion of the moment to kind of speak. And that, that's when black and white really does a trick. You want your mind to kind of create the color for you and, and and when the light works the light works and that black and white when you do this long enough and you start filtering through those images you can just tell when the emotion speaks to a black and white image in my opinion. right and then there's one other thing that uh is that with all these new lights that were invented these led lights that don't have what's called color color temperature there are certain colors that our cameras our digital still cameras have a hard time reading deep reds deep blues yeah. mm -hmm. and so when you're shooting with all red light you have no detail at all in what you're photographing and sometimes when you convert that to black and white and up the contrast you can actually pull some of that detail out so sometimes from a from a it's not a creative decision but it's a technical decision that we're sort of forced into in order to actually make the photo work all right we have time for one more question it's 4 30 we actually have till 4 33 so give me one more question and then we'll wrap this up all right this is a good one to end up on so you guys have talked about the sunsets a lot and do you feel that the sunsets at lock-in are particularly special and if so why do you think that is josh well, you, you, the sunsets of Lockin have been different every year. That's the beauty of it. The first year, we had, you, that was Jay's favorite year for the sunset because the light was just perfect. And then we had the backdrop where we had, you know, the actual green background. You know, th that's the thing about um, the stage. It's always been different, and there's always, it's always been a challenge to try and capture it. It's always been in a different part of the, part of the sky for us. Sunsets are also all about the clouds. Like if there's a really good day where there's low-hanging clouds that end up in the right spot for whatever your perspective is, that's what really makes the sunset pop. So if the clouds are low behind and I'm back at the sound, soundboard, I get the epic shot of that. Sometimes Josh is on stage shooting out and the clouds will be in the other way and it'll kind of work it out. But that's what really kind of makes an epic sunset, I found. And, and of course, also Virginia is for lovers and Virginia is God's country. And that's where the sunsets come from, God's country. But, you know, uh, also I believe that Pete is working on a sunset machine. It's going to be the uh, prototype from the Rainbow 5000 that he used at Fairly Well and the Rainbow 7500 that he's been using at Lock-In. So I think uh, we're going to be seeing the sunset machine uh, combined with the Rainbow machine and uh, with some nice. lysergic uh, acid diethylamide. The sunsets will blow your mind. So on that note, I want to thank everybody for watching Photos with Stories. Thanks, Dave Van. Thanks, Josh Timmermans. Thanks, guys. Uh, in, in these slideshows, we had our email addresses. If you have any other questions, you can ask directly. I think it's van71 at gmail, info at noblevisions.com. I'm easy to find everywhere, jblakesburg.com. Uh, next week, we got Jim Marshall on 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and the following week, we got the Neil Casal photo book. Check out these websites, relic, relicsmarketplace.com. Uh, Neil Casal Music Foundation.org. Please support that uh, Kickstarter campaign for Neil. Thanks, everybody. We love you. We love Lockin. Can't wait to see you all back on the farm. Peace out and uh, see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>